Hello everyone, I'm Chris Bean with the AWR Group of National Instruments. Uh, today I'd like to talk about a new tool we've developed for release in version 14 of our software, uh, network synthesis, particularly synthesis for matching networks. We can synthesize essentially any two-port matching network you need in your design flow. And I've got a couple of examples I'd like to show. One's a power amplifier, one's an antenna. Uh, but first, I'd like to start with a very simple example just to give you a feel for how the, uh, the tool works. So let's go to the software. I've got an um, extremely simple project here, just a series inductor. We're plotting the impedance from it, looking into port 1. And of course, that impedance is up in the inductive area of the Smith chart. <coughs> so I'll go to the network synthesis wizard. Again, it's new in version 14. And the first tab, the definition tab, uh, down here on the bottom left, basically tells you uh, the approach uh, we take for synthesis. Uh, the impedance B, that'll be the uh, impedance you need to look into, you need to match to. In this case, it's going to be that series inductor. Uh, impedance A, that's the system impedance, typically 50 ohms. And we're going to synthesize the matching network here that matches uh, impedance B to impedance A, minimizing mismatch loss in this case. Uh, components tab, this allows the user to select which components uh, they would like to consider uh, for both the series and shunt slots in the matching network. Uh, maximum number of sections, that can be uh, anything essentially. For this, we're just going to leave it at one element. Uh, parameter limits, DC bias feed, we'll talk about that a little later on. Uh, but goals, <coughs> we'll look at a goal we've set up here. Uh, net match, this is our conjugate matching measurement. And we're going to consider mismatch loss. And this is where we tell the wizard uh, which network to use. Or we're going to again look into uh, port one of uh, that inductor. And then the goal, uh, the goal <coughs> is a classic optimizer uh, user interface here. Uh, we're going to look for a goal of 0 dB that is minimizing mismatch loss as much as possible. Hit OK. If I synthesize, of course, the synthesis runs very quickly. It's very simple. I get one network. And of course, it's a series capacitor. I can output that to microwave office. And I can look at the uh, conjugate of that inductor. And then I can look at the impedance we're getting uh, from our just synthesized network. And of course, it uh, is going to line up directly over the uh, impedance, the conjugate of our original network. So that's extremely simple, but it shows what the wizard does in our approach. Again, if I go back. Uh, and bring up the GUI. Uh, the impedance B is our inductor, and we've synthesized a conjugate match to it, uh, which of course is that capacitor. So let's move on to a more real-world practical example now that we have an idea of how the wizard works. And this is a multi-band antenna uh, we've got. And so the idea is we've got an antenna here. Uh, we've actually simulated it. And we're happy with the antenna pattern. We're actually using Analyst, our finite element method EM simulator, to uh, simulate this structure. And if we look at the return loss we're getting for the antenna, we can see it's somewhat pre-matched in our two bands of interest. So it's a dual band antenna uh, centered around 1 gigahertz and a wider band centered around 4 gigahertz. So let's bring up the wizard instance here. And it's the same approach. It's going to be a conjugate match. In this case, uh, we've got the bigger frequency list. And if we look at the frequencies, it represents the dual band nature of the problem we're trying to solve uh, from 0.95 to 1.05 gigahertz, and then 3.6 to 4.4. And just to reiterate again, impedance B here, that's going to be this uh, antenna in this case. Components, we're going to consider a handful of components for series and shunt positions. 
And in this case, we've gone up to eight matching sections. And we can see the search space size is uh, considerable in this case. Uh, parameter limits. This is where you'd set the min and max uh, limits for any lumped element, transmission lines as well. Uh, DC and bias feed. We'll talk about this a little more with the power ex uh, amplifier example I have. <clears throat> but right now we're going to not put any DC constraints on the problem. And then the goals in this case, same as what we saw before, it's net match. And this is where we're selecting our antenna. It's only got one port. Of course, we're going to look into port one. And then if I look at the goals, in this case, we've actually got two goals. So we've set up a goal for both of the bands, 0.95 to 1.05. Again, minimizing mismatch loss. And the second goal corresponds to the upper band. And if you note here, we're putting a heavier weight on this goal. So the designer in this case uh, considers getting a better match at the higher band more important. And if we run this, it's pre-run. If we run it, it's actually a fairly difficult problem. It takes approximately three minutes to run. Uh, I've saved the results. You can see we get uh, cost values that aren't zero, meaning we aren't, of course, completely uh, eliminating mismatch loss. Uh, but we are getting fairly good answers. And if I go ahead and uh, enable this measurement, uh, we can see that uh, we are synthesizing networks that when we look into the matching network with the antenna, uh, we are improving on uh, the return loss uh, considerably.